My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. I'm your host, Craig Pasqua. Today we have a performer, not just any performer, but the performer of our introduction, intro song. So, welcome, Good Shield Aguilar. Welcome to Native Voice TV. Thank you very much. It's good to be here again. Great. It's been you've been you've been here before the, to the show. Yeah, I was actually the very first guest. It was a great honor, and uh, they asked me to contribute my song "Indigenous Soul" to, you know the the whole theme of the whole show. Tell the viewers a little bit about your background. Um, well, my dad's Oglala Lakota in, in French and Spanish, and my mom is Pasqua Yaqui, but also uh, Irish and Spanish. And I've been working with the Buffalo Field Campaign for about 14 years, and um, it's a nonprofit that was started by my great auntie, uh, Rosalie Little Thunder, and we're trying to stop the killing of the last genetically pure free roaming buffalo in Yellowstone Park. How long have you been involved with the Buffalo Field Campaign? Well, I met my Aunt Rosalie in 2000, and she was traveling with this film called The Buffalo Wars, and it was a documentary about a 500-mile walk that she did from Rapid City, South Dakota, all the way to Yellowstone. And and I, I was the first time I met her, and then she I, I knew right away I had to get involved. So about 2000 is when I started to talk about it, but it wasn't until 2002 when I actually started to go on road shows with the Buffalo Field Campaign. Well, I grew up on the Cherokee uh, Nation, and we had free grazing buffalo in our land. But uh, the buffalo field campaigns in Wyoming, correct? Uh, Mo Montana. Montana, I'm yeah. sorry. So I take it the, the buffalo are not as plentiful in Montana as they are in Oklahoma? Well, it's a kind of interesting story. Um, there's actually 600,000 what we think are buffalo in the country, but only 10% or less are actually genetically pure buffalo. Um, in 1905, a cattle rancher mixed the genetics of a buffalo and a cow and created a beefalo. So, so of those 600,000, less than 10% are genetically pure, but only 5,000 or less are free roaming and wild, and those are the ones in Yellowstone. So the other genetically pure ones are, you know, behind fences, and they're basically domesticated. You know, they're not free roaming and following their migratory instincts like the Yellowstone buffalo are. So we have GMO genetically modified buffaloes now. Yeah, that's, uh, I tell people that beefalo are the first uh, GMO on this continent, maybe the whole world, I don't know, but yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't know that there's actually beefalo, and nothing against beefalo, I mean, they're, uh, they're tasty, <laughs> but um, it's the ones in Yellowstone that are very important because um, every year they kill at least a thousand of them, and you know, these are the last genetically pure free-roaming buffalo that still migrate, follow their instincts, so it's very important that they be allowed to thrive. If you go to a store where you find ground buffalo and you know you use it for stew making or, or whatever cooking, is that the the beefalo? Yeah, more than likely, um, yeah. any any buffalo meat you buy in the store is beefalo. Um, usually on the reservations, sometimes they'll have uh, you know a herd of genetically pure ones, but it's pretty rare that you know you get genetically pure buffalo meat. So what's the project doing to to keep the the herd pure? Well, um, we're a grassroots uh, media organization. All we can really do is uh, go out there with our video cameras 
anytime the buffalo leave Yellowstone Park, that's when they're in danger of being killed, of being chased into the capture facility. And, and once they're in the capture facility, they take them to the slaughterhouse. So we have a lot of legislation that we've been, you know, trying to make, uh, you know, legislation that would make the buffalo an endangered species, which, you know, contrary to popular belief, uh, buffalo have never been on the endangered species list. Uh, my Aunt Rosie Little Thunder, she actually was trying to get them to be the national mammal, which I think would be huge, and also to be a walking sacred site because they are the true stewards of the land. You know, they, they take care of our sacred sites. So, you know, to separate them from the land, it, it's, it's, you know, they, just like Lakota people, you know, we share a very symbiotic relationship with the buffalo, and it was said by many um, tribal leaders back in the in you know the 1800s that if buffalo do not exist we do not exist you know just like the salmon people up in the Klamath River that's where I live um, they say if there's no salmon there's no karuks there's no yuroks you know all those tribes out there so my aunt Rosalie you know she's definitely a, one of the biggest inspirations in my life and um, unfortunately she passed away she left this plane in uh, 2014 but um, I'm continuing her work. I'll keep doing what I need to do, and um, hopefully soon the buffalo in Yellowstone will be safe from its subsidized cattle ranching that okay. is actually the reason why they're being killed. Oh, boy. So you're, ho you're holding a calendar. Uh, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the calendar quickly? Well, yeah, we just started putting these out uh, maybe about eight years ago. Um, every picture is from that month, so this is what it looks like in January, you know, and... Um, I usually look at August first because that's when my birthday is. So <laughs> that's what Buffalo are doing in August. And we try to be positive because uh, when we go on our road shows, we'll show films about what's happening out there. I'll share some stories and then play some music. But when we first started doing the road show, we would show very graphic uh, video and you know we would see people leave the room because it was very hard to watch. So with this calendar, we're trying to show the beautiful part of the Buffalo, you know, how they should be all the time, you know, just Buffalo being Buffalo. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we do have to show people around the world what is happening with the buffalo and, and some, you know, some of the graphic video that we've shared. It's, um, you know, it can either motivate somebody to do something or it could make somebody kind of feel hopeless, you know, and that's not what we want. We want people to feel like they can do something about it. And how do they get involved? Somebody, one of our viewers wants to get involved. What can they do? Do you have a website? Yeah, it's actually uh, www.buffalofieldcampaign.org. And um, we actually ask people to come out and you can volunteer. Um, once you get there, we'll feed you three times a day. Um, we'll, we have all the snow gear you could possibly want because we, we get donations from Patagonia, which is a kind of an outdoor outfitting company. Great people, great company, Patagonia. And um, so once you're there, we'll take care of you. We'll show you how to use video cameras and other media and um, you know, so anytime the buffalo leave the park, that's when we go out there with our video cameras, just in case they're being harassed or killed. And luck, hopefully that doesn't happen, but when it does happen, we're there with our video cameras and we're ready to uh, hold those people accountable for their actions. I actually had the great honor of playing with a man named Floyd Redco Westerman for many years. Played bass for him and um, I'll be playing a bunch of tribute concerts this year for Floyd because you know, he passed away in 2008, but I feel like his music still needs to be heard. He was very inspirational to me and f to many, many other people. It's a song he wrote called Missionaries. Slaughter those who oppose you, kill the Indians, save the men. Take the land to build your churches, then you tax the house of God. Take a child as his disciples, as you take away our songs. Go and tell the savage native that he must be Christianized. Pick our souls to pieces, 
as you make us civilized. Feed the gospel, force its values down our throats until they're wrong. And after we are crippled, turn your back and lock the door. An ever circling vulture, you descend upon your prey. Pick our souls to pieces as you watch us as we decay. Cause religion is big business, as your bank accounts will show. And Christ died to save all mankind, but that was long ago. Missionary, missionary, go and leave us all alone. Save the souls of all your sheeple We have a God of our own Missionary, missionaries Go and leave us all alone Save the souls of all your sheeple We have a God of our own Missionary, missionary Go and leave us all alone Save the souls of all your sheeple We have a God of our own This next song is another Floyd song. It's called Chante Washtewi. I'd like to dedicate this to a very special woman. Her name's Kat. that I must wear 
another song called Missionaries. Actually, it's called Holy Man. Whoops. There was a man named Mahatma Gandhi. He wouldn't bow down, he wouldn't fight. He knew the deal was down. This is a song I wrote for my mother. Um, I was raised Catholic, and you know, like my whole life, I would ask these questions, and I, there was a lot of things about it I did not, didn't didn't uh, feel good about, you know, because I've always been into history, and I knew more or less what the Vatican did to a lot of people around the world, particularly indigenous people. And you know, she kept trying to push this religion thing on me, and and I'm not against spirituality, but I feel like you know, the religion was a political force. It wasn't a spiritual force. But um, anyway, I wrote this song just to kind of talk about how we were able to kind of make amends. And, you know, through our indigenous uh, lineage, we were able to find that common ground in spirituality. It's called Remember Who You Are. Oh, uh-huh. 
Another day has come and gone The twilight fades into a rising dawn As consciousness brushes dreams from my eyes And sacred bodies fill the vacant sky Sunday has gone astray It's funny how some things will never change But if I've learned anything so far It's to remember, remember who you are You've got to remember Like a looking glass into the past Or something that you hoped would always last Just wipe away what time has done Just hear the wind and feel the rising sun Sunday has gone astray It's funny how some things will never change But if I've learned anything so far It's to remember, remember who you are You've got to be Sunday has gone astray It's funny how some things will never change But if I've learned anything so far It's to remember What's the difference between performing here and Europe? Because I've heard the crowds in Europe are just, they really want, you know, natives. They really, they understand the plight much better than the United States government does. Yeah, I've, I've actually been traveling to Europe, uh, particularly Germany and Poland, but in Germany, uh, you know, a lot of the history at the turn of the century when, um, you know, natives were being put on reservations and all that, you know, a lot of people in this country didn't know about that, but it was actually a German writer that actually told the truth so yeah, it's interesting how uh, you know Europeans seem to be more familiar with the true history of what happened here. Okay. We're gonna have a special treat. Good Shield's gonna close out the show. So thanks again. You've been watching Native Voice TV. It's a song called Indigenous Soul. Indigenous Soul. Indigenous Soul. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul. Indigenous soul. For 500 years, we were made to fear for our indigenous soul, our indigenous soul. The turtle continent was never meant to be body and soul. And still nobody understands who an invisible man could control our lives and control our minds. Without a conscience, there is no guilt and it tears. And the fibers of our peoples could indigenous soul, indigenous soul.
this so long We're alive because we survived Our indigenous ways, indigenous ways Are in the hearts of our children's eyes Indigenous soul, indigenous soul We're alive because we survived Our indigenous ways, indigenous ways Are in the hearts of our children's eyes Indigenous soul Three-hour tour, three-hour tour. Then it added on our tub, stuck a flag in the dirt of our indigenous core. It's all the same. And they claimed that us was Spain, and the English did again, and that was all she wrote. That was all she wrote. Now the system that they built, staring at their own quilts, because the system has us all in the same book. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul. We're alive because we survived. Our indigenous ways, indigenous ways. Are in the hearts of our children. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul.